In this problem, we're told a tiger leaps horizontally from a 7.5 meter high rock with a speed of 3.2 meters per second. How far from the base of the rock will she land? So we have this tiger here, and it's jumping horizontally from a 7.5 uh, meter high rock. So this is going to be the rock. Uh, we know it's going to be 7.5 meters high, so that's going to be this length here. And then we have this tiger. So this is going to be our tiger. And so this tiger is going to be jumping off this rock uh, with a vertical or a horizontal velocity, since it says horizontally, horizontal velocity of 3.2 meters per second. And so if we just guess what it's going to be like, it's going to jump like this, something like this, and it's going to land. And so at this place it's going to land, they're asking us to find how far from the base uh, of the rock will she land. So if this is the base, we're trying to find this distance here, right, to where she, uh, the tiger is going to land. So we're trying to find this distance here. Uh, I'm just going to call it x. So we're trying to find, or I'm going to call it delta x, right? So our change in our x position. So we're trying to find delta x. And so first, let's write our givens. So given. And so we're going to do a given in the x direction and the y direction because this is two-dimensional, right? We have two dimensions, uh, one dimension going this way, right? Because we have 3.2 meters per second. But we also have a vertical component, right? So we're going to do the given in the y direction and the x direction. So what are we given in the y direction? So always in the y direction, you have to assume your acceleration is going to be gravity, right? So gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What else do we know, though? Well, we know that the initial velocity uh, in the y direction is going to be zero because they don't tell us that there's any uh, vertical uh, velocity. So zero meters per second. And then what else do we know? We know what delta y is. So delta y is our change in y position, right? So we have this 7.5 meters. It's starting at 7.5 meters, and then it goes to zero. So if we do the change in it, uh, right, so it's our final versus our initial, it's just going to be zero minus 7.5. So it's just going to be minus 7.5 meters. So this is going to be it for our uh, y component. Let's do the x component now. So on the x component, you always assume acceleration is going to be zero. So unless they specify, but we're assuming it's zero. And then our initial velocity, v sub zero, is going to be 3.2 meters per second, right? Because they tell us it's going at the speed horizontally. So v sub zero is 3.2 meters per second. And then delta x is our change in our x position right from the beginning to where we end. And so that's, exact, uh, that's what they're asking us for. So we're trying to solve for that delta x. And so now we've laid out exactly our givens. So let's actually go ahead and solve. So what we're going to want to do is use this formula. So delta y or x, it depends on what you're solving for, but we're going to use delta y first. So delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. And so this is going to be the formula that's like most common when you're dealing with two-dimensional uh, kinematics like this. So we're going to use this formula, and we're going to solve for time. So if you think about it, right, if we get time and we have uh, our initial uh, horizontal velocity, all we got to do is take our horizontal velocity and multiply it by time, right? Because that'll give us distance. And so what we need to do is solve for time, and then we can plug it into this. So we got to solve for time, uh, the time it takes uh, till it hits the ground. And so we can solve for that because we have all of our y components. So we're just going to take our y components and actually plug it in and solve for t. So if we plug in all the y components, uh, delta y is minus 7.5 equals v sub 0, which is 0. And we're multiplying it by t, but it's just going to become 0. And so I'm not even going to write it. So e equals 1 half times uh, a, which is minus 9.8, times t squared. And so if we multiply this, it's going to become minus 4.9 times t squared, divide by minus 4.9. So we're going to get t squared equals minus 7.5 divided by... 4.9. And so if you go ahead and do this, t squared equals minus 7.5 divided by minus 4.9 equals 1.53 and so on. And if you square root this, you're going to get that t equals, right, because it's squared, so you got to square root to get rid of it. It's going to equal 1.237. And so keep in mind that this is in seconds, right? So this is going to be the number of seconds it takes to hit the ground. And so now what we're going to solve for is delta x. So if we have the seconds and we have the initial velocity, we can just solve. So we're going to use the same exact formula except for change it uh, for delta x. And you'll see why 
multiplying time just by our initial velocity is going to give us uh, the change in x. So if we do the same exact formula, delta x equals v, v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared. So delta x is what we're solving for, equals v sub 0, which is uh, our initial velocity in the x direction. So 3.2 times our time, 1.237. And then what we're going to do is notice that it's plus one half. And then notice our acceleration in the uh, x direction. It's going to be zero, right? So basically, this entire side is going to cancel, right? It doesn't matter what time is, right? It's 1.27, but since we're multiplying by zero, it's just going to become zero. So this whole side is just going to disappear. So delta x is just going to be equal to our initial velocity times the time. So if you do 3.2 times 1.27, uh, you should get 3.9584. So keep in mind, this is delta x, right? So a change in a position. Uh, this is in meters, and this is in seconds. Or meters per second, and this is in seconds. So they're going to cancel. We're just going to get meters. Uh, I'm going to round up the whole number, right? So 3.9. I'm going to round up to the whole number. So it's just going to become 4 meters. And so our change in x is going to be 4 meters. So how far from the base of the rock will she land? She's going to land 4 meters away. And so this is going to be your answer.